Coming up on Cardinals Insider, I take ground balls with Nolan Arenado. It's part one of a two-week conversation. And now keep in mind, I'm I'm 69 years old here, yeah, too. You're getting now. down perfect right now, man. <laughs> Your hips are better than mine. Plus, Miles Michaelis keeps us all smiling. Hear what his teammates love about number 39. Fish. He's the king of the fish. And later, go inside the clubhouse for a special presentation. I'm honored to announce this year's winner of the prestigious Lou Gehrig Award. Those stories and more ahead on Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider, I'm Ozzie Smith. I took a lot of pride in playing good defense, and so does current third baseman Nolan Arenado. The two of us got together to talk and take ground balls at spring training. Here's part one of our two-part conversation. Well, Nolan, first of all, I want to thank you for coming out and, and, and hanging out and taking some ground balls here. When you're, say, before, the, before this thing starts, and before the game start, do you sit down and look at uh, scouting reports and things like that from a defensive standpoint? Absolutely. You know, I always try to, you know, do my homework on who I'm facing. I'm fortunate enough to have the experience, um, but I'm fortunate I got Stubby and some of the coaches that helped me with where to play. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. a little different nowadays. There's a lot of numbers that they go through and share with me, but uh-huh. I definitely have a feel. I try to go off field too. You know, I try to trust who I am and what I know. But uh, you know, there's definitely a numbers aspect that we have to trust, also. Yeah. Have you? Have you? Uh, has this always just come pretty natural for you, or is it one of those things that y- you 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 put a lot of time into? Yeah. I mean, it, it, I feel like feelings always come natural, you know. But I've had to work. You know, I've had to work on my feet. I've always had a good arm, good hands. But to be honest with you, I, was, I, I love taking ground balls, man. I yeah. love the process of it. I love we're going out on the field and working on it. Um, I don't look at it as a chore or something that I got to do just to say I did it you know I actually enjoy coming out here and working on my fielding well I tell you you know for me uh, as I talked to you about a minute ago this was therapy for me yeah. you know it gave me a chance to get away from the rest of the world and and here I'm, I'm in my own world and I'm able to there are no restrictions I'm able to create as I feel yeah you absolutely. know and I never had any restrictions as far as playing defense you know there was never I never locked myself into a certain way of making a play either I said well you can't do it like this people say uh, a lot of times I would hear well you can't throw off of that foot or you can't throw off of this foot and I said well why not yeah if you can if you can still make the play right well I think that's my favorite part about ground balls you know I think one thing I've always done is I do try everything I do like trying different plays Mm -hmm. and to be honest with you you know if you just if we just took ground balls all the time with nothing that, like changing your mental, then it would be get kind of boring. But you know, every day I take ground balls. I don't want to make errors, right? That's no right. Errors. Make That's hit the guy in the chest. That's right. You know, backhand, the Derek Jeter play. Uh huh. You know, different things like that. You know, that push me, but also make me better. Okay. Let me ask you this: Do you start from a stagnated standpoint, or are you always moving? I'm always moving. You know, I'm, a per- I'm I start kind of tall. You know, I, I I could never do like Scott Rowan, how he started so wide. You know what wide. I'm saying? I yeah. just could never do that. I just feel like I'm kind of always jittery and I like to move a lot and it keeps my first step quicker. Uh-huh. And for me, so I like to start tall and then just kind of bounce around and just trust it. Yeah. So when, when I talk to people about, about fielding, you remember in physics how we talked about what's in motion stays in motion? Yeah. So anytime you're, you're, you got movement, it makes it easier to flow into the, in, yeah, into the, into the play. Absolutely. Like I said, that's why I never wanted to start like like with no movement, you know, right. I always want to keep my body moving. I always want to just, I just feel like that helps my first step, you know yeah, what you I'm know saying, what? in my rhythm. Yeah, a lot of times when people talk to me about about playing defense, they think that I've got this this giant, this big philosophy and they're looking for a whole lot of stuff. And I said, no, it's real simple. The body reacts to what it sees. Absolutely. And if the, and if the body's moving, it's easier to, to, to go left, right, yeah. back, forward. I agree. I think, you know, it's funny. I always get asked, like, what drills you've done throughout your career. I'm like, there's not a whole lot of drills. There's just a lot of ground balls. Ground balls. There's a lot of ground exa- balls. I mean, there's, you know, drills aren't going to make you a great fielder, but if you work on ground balls and making the throw and throwing from different angles, that's how you become a better that's fielder. That's exactly right. Drills and, help, but 
getting out there on a field and throwing, that's how you're going to get better. Yeah, and knowing where you are on yeah. the field at all times. Exactly right. You know, I, I watch you take ground balls, and it appears to me, and if, if, I, if, if somebody asked me, I'd say, you know where you are at all times. Yes. Yeah, you know in the situation, right? Yes. How many outs? Where the play's at? The ball's hit hard to me. I go to second. If it's hit slow, I'm going to go to first. I'm going to go mm -hmm. home on this. I mean, those are things I'm definitely thinking about before the play happens. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And, and it's, this is fun. Yeah. This is fun. And, and it's fun for I, me, hitting I love, ground balls with you, man. I love, I love the creativity. Yeah. Well, I love being out here. You know, I'm fortunate to be out here taking ground balls with you. Um, and uh, it's an honor, you know what I'm saying? Well, thank so, you, man. I appreciate that. And, and when I see that, you know, that, that wall, that sign that says, you know, become wizards and taking ground balls and stuff, <laughs> man, it's, it's cool, man. It's uh, Well, you know, it's, that's really, a, that truly is an honor to have a field named after you. And I'm sure that as time goes on here, they'll, they'll probably add your name to yeah, it. Right, because right. it's, you're fun to watch because there's so much improvisation with what you do, but you do it with great degree of consistency. Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing is consistency, trying to be as consistent as possible. I mean, you've won so many gold gloves. I won my share, my share and I just, there's a, there's a, you want to hold up your end of the bargain. That's you know right. what I'm saying? You that's never want right. to let that go. And now keep in mind, I'm, I'm 69 years old here yeah, too you're now. getting down perfect right now, man. <laughs> your hips are better than mine. I'd say, you know, sometimes <laughs> it's, it, it's all about, uh, it's all about making sure that you you stay stay limber yeah that's right as you get old i mean you know but as you get older you get tight and stuff yep. so i'm just trying to stay loose flexible beautiful 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 be sure to join us again next week as nolan and i take more ground balls during part two of our conversation that's next week but for now stay with us there's more cardinals insider after the break Miles Michaelis signed with the Cardinals six seasons ago, and since then, he's gotten plenty of outs and laughs. Here's what his teammates think of him in this week's Teammate Talk. He's funny. We're both funny. Goof. Clown. He's just funny. Comedian. Class clown. <laughs> <laughs> Mustache. Uh, outspoken. Miles is not afraid to let you know, and uh, I love Miles. We get along great, but he, he's outspoken for sure. I mean, just funny the way that he goes about things. Um, it's just, he's just funny. Fish. He's the king of the fish. So uh, I'm trying to get him to take me out on his boat to go catch some marlin or something. So far, I've only caught like this baby little grouper. So uh, my goal is to get something bigger. The guy's never having a bad day. He's always coming in, you know, and same energy and always ready to go. Hardworking too, um, you know, somebody that didn't have the clearest path to the big leagues really, you know, had to go overseas, came back. And so I just think that says a lot about his character. He's, you know, he's somebody that um, has really had to work hard and now, you know, he's a perennial, perennial big leaguer and an all-star. You need guys like him, you know, it's, you're with each other, you know, eight months out of the year, basically each other's family, you know, and having guys like him who aren't taking everything Completely serious 24-7, you know, definitely helps and lightens the mood. Mustache. I just, you can't, well, he cut it at the end of the year last year. He cut it off last year, but you can't just look at him and not look at the mustache. It's crazy. Coming up, Paul Goldschmidt joins Elite Company as a Lou Gehrig Award winner. And I'm grateful for all he does for the city of St. Louis and for the St. Louis Cardinals, so thank you. Go inside the clubhouse for the announcement later on in the show. Earlier, you heard how Miles Michaelis keeps his teammates loose. But the third-year player, Alec Burleson, is known to get a few laughs, too. He certainly made us laugh during this Miked Up. Hot mic, be careful. Are you serious? <laughs> Look. Watch your lips. I'm gonna make sure they send this whole clip. When they cut and edit, I'm gonna make sure they send it to me. And I proofread it because, or proof watch it, because if not, <laughs> They might, they might try and screw me. I wonder if I fart, if it'll pick it up on the mic. Like, just rip it. Oh, so fast, so fast, so fast. Burley said he needs to look over you today, babysit you today, right? Wasn't the, wasn't the word I said, but I can get behind that. Dude, I'm more mature than probably all these other people. You think so? You're probably what? 
You're You're probably what? More mature. More mature. Dude, I heard you had two two liters of Minute Maid lemonade Dude, who the other told day. Yeah. <laughs> so mature. I'm, I can't I actually can't remember who I heard it from. But uh, but clearly I'm not wrong. <laughs> Come down here, to Donnie. Hey, Donnie. <laughs> Dude, stop. I'm just I just want I like your energy. I want to be around you. Cork, Donnie. Dude, stop. Not, dude, we were just on camera together yesterday, and now you won't speak to me. Jaywalk, let's switch today. Huh? You want to switch today? So I can be next to Donnie? The camera's right there. At least smile to the camera, and I'll go away. Hey, you I told my friends to like me. Just not with a mic? Oh, that's okay. You're still okay, buddy. Oh, if, this, if, the, if the camera can hear me eating seeds, I need to spit them out. They can? Yeah, I got to not. <laughs> Hold on, the camera fucking on me. That just looked even worse. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Dude, I keep itching my nose on camera, so it looks like I'm picking it. I just picked my nose on camera. I just picked my nose again on camera, dude. Fast, 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 fast. Huh? Very fast. Oh, that one's pushing to me. I got it. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, yeah, I do. You guys probably think I'm talking a lot, but I normally do talk this much. Especially when I'm out here in the outfield all alone. Hey, Johnny. I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. Turner's trying to get me to do the, ba the, the my dance moves. I can't do it for him. It won't... Uh, it won't pass the edits. And I've picked my nose four times on camera. I kept like I'm not even I'm not even gonna do it now. But no, they'll make it a thing. They'll make it a thing. Yeah. They'll make it a thing. It's fine. Hey Donnie. But it's not like I'm like knuckle deep. I'm like itching it like this. See like now it's itchy on this side. But you gotta have friends. Oh, that's mine. Oh. If he throws me a knuckle ball, I'll just quit. That'll work. Shoot him. Perfect round. I was thinking about doing uh, frosting the tips. Do what? You should have. So Frost that, them what? White? Uh, they like blend bleak. in. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just pick my nose again. If you enjoyed this mic'd up, check out others on Cardinal's YouTube channel. But for now, stay with us. There's more to come after the break. Each year, the Lou Gehrig Award is presented to a major leaguer who follows in Gehrig's legacy of integrity and excellence, both on and off the field. Our cameras were at a team meeting where this year's winner was announced. I'm honored to announce this year's winner of the prestigious Lou Gehrig Award. Lou Gehrig was a distinguished member of the Phi Delta Theta fraternity and a man of integrity. The award was created to acknowledge individual players' outstanding commitment to both the community and philanthropic. Previous recipients from the St. Louis Cardinals are Albert Pujols, Mark McGuire, Ozzie Smith, Lou Brock, Ken Boyer, and Stan Musial. It's my honor to introduce this year's winner, Paul Goldschmidt. <laughs> Since signing with the Cardinals in 2018, Paul has been a strong supporter of Adam Wainwright's Big League Impact. He has supported numerous organizations through a slew of Big League Impact initiatives. Since 2019, Paul's ticket program, Goldie's Golden Ticket, has brought deserving youth organizations to the game, provides t-shirts, photo cards, tickets, food vouchers, and meets with groups to answer questions, signs autographs, and takes photos. Over the years, Paul has met with hundreds of children and other organizations, including Scott Air Force Base Library, the James Project, and St. Louis Youth Sports Outreach, just to name a few. The past two years, Paul has hosted a free baseball clinic, not only for kids to get the opportunity to learn tips and skills from a pro, but also for Goldie to share with kids, parents, and coaches how to have a healthy attitude with youth sports. On a personal note, he never says no. He's one of the most generous players I've ever been around, and I'm grateful for all he does for the city of St. Louis and for the St. Louis Cardinals. So thank you. Congrats.
The first Cardinals Hall of Fame induction was held in 2014. A decade later, there are countless memories from dozens of Red Jacket speeches. We're going to set aside the time to revisit some of the most memorable. Adam and Albert and Yachty and I were going to go in together someday. When I came over, we talked about that a lot. And they're still playing, so I didn't get the memo that we were, we were still doing it. So I'll come back and watch you guys be nervous about this someday. Um, fa fast forward to, to July 24th, 2009. We're in New York. I'm playing for the Oakland A's. Uh, it's not going great. Um, we are in New York City playing the Yankees. Uh, I get a call early on that morning. Actually, they had a hard time getting a hold of me. We were in a really old hotel, had no service. But uh, finally, get, somebody gets a hold of me and they said, hey, uh, you've been traded to the Cardinals. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. So that was the beginning. And then three days later, July 27th, 2009, I made my first, played my first game in St. Louis as a St. Louis Cardinal. Uh, put the white jersey on. The birds on the bat, very special moment for me, uh, taking the field uh, in St. Louis as a St. Louis Cardinal. It was very surreal. Um, I remember the crowd was, was electric. We were playing the Dodgers. It was a, it was a big game. We were in the playoff race. Uh, my first at bat, the crowd is on its feet. It was an incredible feeling. Uh, I hit a double to center field off the wall, and I remember as I'm running to second base, I felt like I was just gliding to second base, and the crowd was going nuts, and, and the realization you know, that I, I had just played in St. Louis in front of that fan base as a St. Louis Cardinal was something that I'll always remember. When we return, I'm answering one of your questions. It's Ask Ozzy, and it's up next. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Michael in San Antonio, Texas asks, what drills do you recommend for kids who play shortstop? Well, Michael, there is no substitute for taking ground balls. As a kid, I used to lay on the floor and throw the ball up to get the feel of the ball hitting the glove without seeing it. I used to go against, a, throw balls against a brick wall, using working my forehand and my backhand. So um, it's, there's no substitute for hard work. Put in the time, and it'll make you a better field. You know, I think that today there's so many kids are, are stuck inside on computer. I think it's important for kids to get outside, throw the ball around, and have fun with their friends outside. Thanks for the question, Michael. If you want to submit a question, head on over to cardinals.com insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. But for now, don't go anywhere. There's more Cardinals Insider after the break. Baseball is a serious game, but there's still room for fun. For this week's Ask a Cardinal, we take a popular question from the internet. Is cereal a soup? No. Is cereal a soup? No, no chance. No, 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 no. Why? I just, I understand why somebody might say it, but it's, it's just not soup. Soup, uh, soup's gotta be hot. Who says cereal is a soup? Well, nobody in particular, but it is like kind of little noodles and a liquid. Noodles? What kind of cereal are you eating? Noodles. <laughs> this is your question. This is your question. This isn't a debate at all. This is not a debate whatsoever. Give me a better, give me a better question. No, I, I see where you guys stand and I'm not going there. Cereal is not, is not a soup. I see where you guys stand, and it's not going to happen. I just have never thought of it as a, as a, as a soup. That's, that's a good question. It's not a good <laughs> There's just, I, you got to be crazy to call cereal soup. If we're going to court, right? If we're going to court, it's a soup. Yeah, right? That's technically a soup. I think cereal can be considered soup. Food that is in a liquid. God, I've eaten a lot of soup, if that's a soup. I love... <laughs> I love cereal, so yeah, I mean, I guess I'm a big soup guy. Do you have the definition of soup on hand? Because I feel like it fits the technical definition, but I wouldn't want to eat it if someone served me it and called it soup. <laughs> soup can't be sweet, how about that? Soup can't be sweet. The sugar, all the sugar in cereal, I'm out on it being a soup. When a soup is a soup, 
it's all in one container, you make it together and then you put, cereal's two different things and you mix them. It's like, is Ore are Oreos a soup? You dip Oreos in milk, that's not a soup, right? If you take chicken noodle soup and you take the broth out of it, what is it? It's chicken noodle, it's chicken noodle. It's no longer soup, you take the broth out of it. But a bowl of cereal and milk, by definition, is a soup. Why would Miles say? He said it was. He was, he was like, it is a soup. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, it's Miles, it's Miles. So. I'm gonna stay out of that one because uh, there's a whole bunch of controversy right now. I think I'm just gonna play Switzerland on this one and just stay out of that. We didn't know it was gonna be as much of a thing oh, as yeah. it is, but it's, mm -hmm. it's definitely a thing. <laughs> definitely a thing. <laughs> a soup. What are we doing? <laughs> That's it for this episode. You can always catch us online at cardinals.com slash insider or watch full episodes on YouTube. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you right back here next week. What qualifies something to be a soup? It's soupy. Um, <laughs> it's... <laughs>